What does it take to write a winning offer on a home in Austin in 2024? Well, if you've been watching any of my videos, I've lately been talking about how our market is shifting to a buyer's market, which means that buyers have tons of choices to pick from and a little more negotiating power. On average, our homes have been selling for about 5% below asking price, but this is not the case on every single home. So what I'm gonna break down in this video is how we guide our clients to know what is the best possible price on a home depending on the circumstances, which include seller psychology and also the local market conditions. Now, Austin is a really big city. It's spread out pretty far geographically. And then when you include like the suburbs and surrounding towns, it's a huge area. So the hotness of the market is going to vary greatly. As you get closer to downtown, homes are gonna be a little bit pricier and usually will sell a bit faster because there's not a lot of new construction competition. But as you get further out into the suburbs, right now there's tons of builder inventory. So that can mean it that it's a little bit slower markets out there and you might have a bit more to negotiate on. So as you start narrowing down specific neighborhoods and communities, one of our jobs is to help you realize what homes are going for in that certain area. Because like I said, it can vary across the city but let's get into what to offer on a specific home. So basically any homeowner has three ways they can price their home. And it's super important for you to realize that when you're about to make an offer. Now, the first one is what I call aspirational pricing. This is a homeowner or seller who is looking for that needle in a haystack offer. We know the market maybe for their home is about 700,000, but they're like, let's just see if I can get 800. Let's just put it out there and try it. Now you can tell if someone is using aspirational pricing because you can look and see, well, none of the other homes are going for that price. Now, Texas is a non-disclosure state, which means that you can't look up sold prices. Only a real estate agent can find out that data, but we'll also help you see, okay, where are the recent sales actually selling for? And we can tell you how high or above this seller tried to price their home. Now here's where you need to understand seller psychology. If they just put their home on the market that first weekend and you're like, this is way overpriced, the odds that that person will take a price cut way below, even to where it's like the fair market value are very slim because they're putting it out there just to test the market. Let's see what happens. So they're not likely to give up on that first weekend. But if you watch that home and it sits for a couple of weeks, the reality might start setting in that, okay, they should have lowered it a little bit more. You can always offer a lower price from the beginning, but the odds are that a lot of sellers will reject that because they want it to sit a little bit longer. But if that's the home you love, why not try it? And if they reject that offer, just keep in communication with them. See, after a couple of weeks, did they lower the price? Once they've started doing some price cuts, you usually can come in and offer a bit more because they're realizing now that the market is rejecting that price. And it often backfires on homeowners that price it too high. They end up selling it a lot lower than if they had just priced it right at market value. So the second way to price is market value. This is where we often recommend for our homeowners to list their home. This is based off of the data of the recently sold sales in that area. And sometimes the, the homeowners wanna go a little bit higher, but it's still within range that it's not grossly overpriced like the first ones. So here you can expect that the offers should be fairly close to asking price. If it seems fair, you still might be able to negotiate a bit because we are somewhat in into a buyer's market. So it's common to ask for some closing costs or things like that. But if they've priced it pretty fairly, then you're, you're not going to get a really low offer on that particular home. Now, the third way that some homeowners will price their home is below market value. Now, in this case, it could be that they need to move immediately. They don't want their home to sit for a while. They just are like, we just got to get this sold and move on. They might also have the intention of let's try to start up a buzz and get into a bidding war. Now, I will tell you, there are some houses that are still getting multiple offers in the Austin area, but it's nothing crazy like what we saw back in 2021 or the spring of 2022. 
In fact, recently I've had a couple of homes where they were our listings and we got the home uh, with two offers on the first weekend and both of the offers were well below list price. Now we were able to negotiate and get one of the buyers up very, very close to that asking price. So don't be scared by multiple offers either, but just know that if someone priced their home below market value, there are a lot of buyers still looking and if they see a great deal, they're gonna jump on it. So don't wait on that one to see what happens. If it's a home you love and you're like, man, they priced it really well, just put in a really strong offer very close to asking price. You might be able to get a little more, but don't push it and try to go lower again. That homeowner priced it really well for the market and just accept it at that value is already a great deal. Now, if you're someone that's like, I like to bargain and I want to see what kind of deal I get, then we can also check to see what homes have been sitting for a couple of months. Instead of just only looking at the new ones, we can see, okay, where are the ones that have already slashed their prices pretty greatly and see what kind of deals you can get that way. Now let's dive into new construction homes because this is something completely different. So there are many home builders all across the town. Most of them are going to be in the suburb areas because that's where we're still growing and there's lots of land to build on. Now, builders are also offering a lot of incentives right now, including lower fixed rates. Um, some are offering to buy down your rate or to pay your closing costs. And then on top of that, they may be even to wheel and deal a little bit on the pricing, but it's going to vary greatly by the builder and also the price point that you're in. So we also can look and see, okay, what are these builder homes actually selling for? Just like we can on an existing resale home, we can say, okay, all of these builder homes were listed for 800, but look, they're selling around 750, 740. So that means we can probably get about 40, 50 K off on this. Now, some builders are very strict though, and you can see on the pricing, okay, they listed it here and they sold it just about the same price. So they didn't budge on price but they might've been giving out 20K in closing costs or some other types of deals there. So the specific builder is going to have different incentives that they offer. And then also you've gotta be mindful of the price point. So I recently, we had a, um, a home that was, you know, originally listed, it was like a $1.15 million home. The builder slashed the price 100,000, so we were close to a million 50 we were still able to knock off another 50,000 and then get 20,000 in closing costs. So 50,000 sounds like a huge discount, but when you're looking at something was a million 50, it's not as big. It's still, you know, like a 5% decrease. Now, if you were on a home that is 300,000, you're not going to get 50,000 off. You know, there's just not that much room in there. That's a much bigger percentage of what the actual sales price is. So you might be able to get 10,000 or, you know, some kind of little extra incentive there, but don't expect the same massive price cut that you would in a more expensive home. Think of it as proportionally, how much of a percent could I get off of the listing price? Now, of course, our whole job as real estate agents is to make sure that our clients are getting the best deal possible. So we will always push for you to get a little bit more, but we also wanna make it clear that you're not going in there with unrealistic expectations thinking, okay, I'm gonna get 5% off of everything. I'm gonna get closing costs and whatever. Like I said, it's going to vary greatly on how the homeowner priced their home to begin with, what's their motivation behind why they priced it, and then also, you know, what's the competition in the area. But either way, we'll make sure that you are always confident and comfortable with the offer that you're getting because we want you to end up with a home that you love. If you have more questions about the market, check out our latest market minute that we just posted in June.